Welcome to Loudmouth Radio Network. My name is Sunny. As a former professional athlete turned entrepreneur realtor and the producer of Loudmouth Radio Network, I look forward to bringing content to you that empowers, inspires, and entertains you. Tune in each week as we have unscripted and unfiltered talks from entrepreneurship, real estate, politics, entertainment, comedy, LGBTQ topics, day-to-day life, and everything in between. All shows available on demand 24-7 on your favorite podcast platforms. So you, hey, pretty girl. Hello, hello. Okay. Sorry, I got my hands all over the place. Um, welcome to afternoon. It's Sunday, June 2nd. And I have a very special guest and I'm having a very special conversation. So now I can see you. Can you see me? I can see you. Okay, good. Uh, I have a very special guest here and I actually got to pull my phone again because I got my little notes. So I want to introduce my special guest and the special conversation today. So uh, this is an intimate conversation and uh, we're having a discussion about unmasking narcissistic relationships. And my special guest is Germany Faith Jones, a mother to two boys, a middle child, a sister to an older brother and a younger brother, a budding entrepreneur who over the last year obtained her bartender's license in the state of Georgia. After a long-term goal of over 15 years of working to get away from a life of sex trafficking, and survivor prostitution from a young adult age. At one point, Faith was able to turn herself into an adult entertainer producer, but it didn't come with many moments of violence and huge levels of uncertainty and safety. After having her first son in the midst of an unhealthy and toxic relationship, Faith struggled with caring for a young son with no family support of her own. This would eventually lead to a bad breakup and an angry ex that wasn't the boy's father, who would later decide to take her son and keep him in hiding for over four years until she was able to get him back from another woman that was also dealing with the same toxic connections to the same man who was in fact the father of her young son. Faith would come to know that her son had been less than 45 minutes away from her the entire time without support from law enforcement or public outcries. Faith would become a preferred alias name that better aligned with her life's journey. That in spite of battling 30 years of mistreatment and character assassination from her own mother, Germany would embrace the name Faith as a symbol of her own perseverance and attitude toward life that God had not truly forgotten nor forsaken her. So I want to introduce to some and reintroduce to many, many, many others, Miss Germany Faith Jones, who is also ironically my bonus daughter <laughs> that has become one of the positive things I can say and now see from 10 years of toxicity of my ex-wife, who also happens to be her mother. Namaste and welcome, honey. Hello, hello. So I, I had to give that whole uh, dissertation. Uh, oh, you deserve I- that opportunity. <laughs> Which is why I said I'm introducing and reintroducing because um, if you see me looking away, it's just because I'm I'm doing my producer stuff as we're talking. Okay. And um, one of the things I think is so important here is that um, today, and I'm and I'm I may interactively call you Faith, I may say Germany, but Germany, Dominique Jones, I take your whole name. <laughs> Germany is your God, your your birth name and yeah. God given name. How about that? Right, right. Okay. So, I wanted to um, say that I may interactively go back and forth about um, saying both your names because I do or actively use both those names with you, and that way I won't confuse anybody that's listening or watching. And I want to say, I want to start off this conversation and say that this is not a necessarily easy conversation. It's not an easy topic. Um, But I think one thing that's incredible is that this moment to me reflectively shows me that there is a possibility of healing, of grace, forgiveness, acknowledgement of of wrongdoing. Right. 
um, a moment of self-accountability. And I just kind of wanted to say that to you publicly. And 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 I'm kind of I'm nervous. So if you see me kind of feeling jittery, you know, this is this is this is not an easy moment. It's a, a well-needed moment, but it's not an easy moment because right. we are examples of what healing can become. Right. Because our interaction and our relationship has always not been this. At all. <laughs> I'm 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 saying all of these things first, and then I'm gonna let you have the floor because I wanted to publicly acknowledge the fact that, that you know, for over the last ten years, um, now twelve plus, right? Uh, you know, you were introduced to me um, in a way in which was not the completeness of who you are, right. and because of that misconstrued introduction, we've had a volatile interaction and relationship, right? right. And um, so I want to, you know, I've already expressed so much and gave an introduction of you. And I want to allow you to be able to speak beyond me saying those things. But I wanted to establish the floor first and just right. say, thank you for, you know, being this transparent in this moment. Well, thank you. You are so welcome and and, and so deserving. And, and, and as this conversation gets deeper, people will understand why. Um, but what would you like to start at first? I was mean, so much you already um <laughs> gave the gist, gist of a lot of things um <laughs> <laughs> um yeah like um like you were um saying um at eighteen um I ended up finding myself being homeless out in Atlanta streets um for like six months um after my uncle kicked me out I ended up um you know, doing hair on the streets just to survive and sleeping at people's houses and, you know, giving up my body just to do those things, um, to survive. And I met, um, a singing group on tour for doing hair. Um, I went to Indiana and was at a black expo. Um, this is probably like around 2005, some, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I ended up going out there meeting a singing group from Miami and one of the guys um, happened to be um, a pimp and he was a very great friend of mine. I, I didn't judge him for his, you know, his things, but I was just like, you know, I grew up in the church. I don't want to do, you know, those type of things, but I don't have a problem doing your hair. You're cool. You know what I mean? We talked over a while. And then once things started to get a lot more, heavy for me in my life um in Georgia um as we returned um a mutual friend of ours um who was also a client um that I used to do their hair um ended up giving them a phone call and and telling them you know she's in a rough place all to know now that I'm older that I was in a situation where I was with a madam and which is a female pimp I never knew that until I was older and realized about, um, you know, the whole game, pretty much. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, once he gave him a phone call, I was able to, you know, get a new ID, get on the bus, and I became a dancer as soon as I got off the bus. So mm -hmm. um, I had my shoes, my clothes, I was ready to go. I worked that same day and... From then on, I was... So you were introduced into stripping, pretty much. Right, right. Stripping, um, prostitution, all of that um, wow. at 18. So uh, life kind of went a little bit faster than I expected. Um, you know, and then, you know, I couldn't really rely on my mother at that time because, you know, I was in cosmetology school. This was not the life that I was supposed to be living. Um I was I was doing pretty good until, you know, my mom decided to chase whatever dream she decided to chase um, in New York and left me with my 14 year old brother. So, um, you know, me graduating at 16 and, and coming from Virginia to Atlanta and, you know, being with my mom and just being excited to be back with my brother. And my mother, you know, what I mean, for her to leave for months at, a, you know, at a time and left us with nothing so that ended up having to be a struggle when I you know immediately when I came to Georgia after high school so um I immediately had to be a sister a mom 
and and a student all at the same time. So life life was life was heavy. Right. right. Already. You, 16? Yeah, I went to military school. Oh wow. in, in in Virginia. Yeah. So you said so were you all you weren't always with your dad? No, I was with my mom. Um oh, I lived in yeah, I lived with my mom um from birth till about twelve, twelve and a half. How was that for you? You said what? How was that for you? Just you know, those first twelve years. How were they for you? Um amazing and, and horrible all at the same time. Um and with with this that... we had we had with my family, um, we had some adventurous times, you know. What I mean, my mom was always a person like, let's get up and go, let's, you know, what I mean, um, you know, we would dress up in wedding gowns just to go to Ryan's like a golden corral here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And um used to mess know, I mean, it was just an exciting, you know, as a kid, it was exciting to do different things, you know what I mean? Like um spontaneous things, but it also never gave us stability because we were always moving from school to school. I never stayed in one school. You know what I mean? I went to maybe five or six different schools by the time I was 12, you know what I mean? And then I mean, why, um, why, were you, why were you not so let me say this, Ger uh, Germany Faith, either one. If <laughs> at any moment I ask you something that you want me to hold or just stop or just just tell me, give me a minute. That's gonna be IQ. Just give right. me a minute. If, if if you need to not answer or if you need that real second for a moment, that's fine. Right. And if it's something that we we get into is too much or 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 whatever, you just tell me. Right. Right. So. Because you know, I I know you to a degree, and I've had to come to get to know you for myself, and right. not based upon what I was told. Right. So that's kind of why I'm asking those questions. So up until the age of twelve, um, because this is the funny part, you, you you know, I inherited you in the marriage, but we didn't have this prior right. to all of the time periods. So this right. is new for me. So. Up until the age of 12, moving place to place and place to place, why was that kind of, you know, kind of happening for you? Like, that? um, well, number one, my mom was in uh in a very abusive relationship. Um, she was married to a man that beat her and also beat us, and she wasn't really well, from my recollection, she wasn't aware of, you know, I mean the abuse that was going on toward her children. Um, but it just was I, I don't really know. I mean, I think it was kind of an impulse type of move. It was it was like it was time to go. Um, uh, when that time was up, it was time to go, or it was another job, you know what I mean? Because I remember yeah. so this is this is the first marriage you were speaking of. Yeah, yeah. And I remember her telling me that she met her first husband and married in a week, got married in a week. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, and that's who I knew to be my father, um, because of course she was pregnant with me. Um, and then I, you know, when I was, when I was born, that's who I knew as my father. I never knew my real father until probably, or never knew that was my father, um, until I was probably about 12. Um, Are you yeah, I, I didn't, I, I, I had pictures with him. I didn't know that was my dad. I always thought he was my uncle. Oh, wow. And so my little brother's dad was mm. the person it's that I considered was my father. Wow. So, I you know, know, all of me and my brothers and my siblings, we all have different fathers. So, you know what I mean? Mine was a prom night. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it wasn't like you know, it was a type of relationship, you know, probably like my brothers had a relationship, you know, she had a relationship with them. Me, I I kind of, you know, adapted to being, trying to be, you know, I was more felt like I was a daddy's girl and, you know what I mean? And he had his own issues, whatever the case may be, but it was, you know, very physical. Well, oh, I don't know. I didn't no, know your adopted father. Your father. Right, yeah, my father. Father. Okay, okay. 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 You know, he had his issues. I don't know what that was. I mean, he, 
he really like I know it was a lot of insecurities as well because I mean he wasn't you know able to read as well and you know what I mean and certain certain things he wasn't able to do so you know I guess that kind of you know turned, turned a different way and you know he directed that anger toward you know us as kids and it was it was quite quite horrible I mean we um we ended up having to leave my mom for a little while went to a foster home and you know what I mean um so my even mom in the foster home and you know the funny part is that I think for me Faith in 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 this conversation like I'm I'm, I'm, I'm interrupting because I was told something differently you know, I was led to think something and told something differently. In the foster home moment, I was also told that was a matter of like some days, maybe. In reality, how long were you in foster care? I was in there for maybe a few months. Okay. Some months, yeah. Like a few months. Um, Because, I mean, of course, we had to go back to the judge. I mean, the judge wasn't letting us go when a man has thrown my brother, my oldest brother, who broke his back. You know, what I mean, he my my oldest brother fell from an eighteen story building and broke his whole entire back and had to learn how to walk again. And so, um, Wait, he he fell. Yeah, we were on a field trip. It was on the news in North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that. I do remember. Yeah. That. Okay. And so, you know, for him to to accomplish so much and be in the army now is is amazing. But you know, what I mean, um, my my oldest brother was really blamed for a lot of things. Um. And that was in my own doing too. But um, as far as the foster home, I'm the reason why we went to foster care because I'm the one who told. Ooh, we got, and, got some things in common, honey. Go ahead. I'm, and going. no one knew that I was the person that told because I was tired of getting beat on. I was tired of losing consciousness. I was tired of my mom's arm getting broken her hair getting shaved off and I was tired of you know what I mean like us just struggling sometimes you know what I mean I, I mean we had we weren't living like really bad but when it got bad it got bad you know what I mean it was it was nothing right. there but to you know what I mean try to try to make it out of mud my mom worked as hard as she could and and I admired her I that was like my number one fan At the time, and you were and, like how 10, 12, something like that. I was like uh third grade. Oh, third grade. So you were like nine, ten. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. then after y'all came out of foster care, and then you say you end up taking care of your brother. Yeah. And how did you end up taking care of your brother? Your well, young... um, after I left um Georgia, um 12, I went with my dad. My dad ended up kind of um taking me for my mom on a visit okay. okay and so um he never told her you know what I mean he was bringing me back nothing there was no communication so my dad basically kind of kidnapped me for my mom mm -hmm. and was like you know you're gonna live with us and be safe and you know what I mean things like that so um I basically uh I left and I lived with my dad for about maybe five six years mm -hmm. no six years six going on seven years and then um once I graduated um I moved I mom I called my mom and she had booked the ticket for me to come back without my parents knowing and so my parents had to pick me up from military school and drop me off and and I went back you know came back to Atlanta but when I got back to Atlanta, everything was okay. I went to Empire Beauty School. My mom signed me up for financial aid, get to beauty school. We were living in Decatur, you know, nice townhouse. You know, things were okay. I was, you know, starting to try to find little jobs here and there or whatever. But in the you day know, that you thought you were, it was your dad, was he still in the picture then? No, he had been gone. Okay. It, he had left Um, before I, well... Let me see. Before I left and went with my dad, my mom ended up getting divorced with my first, my stepfather. And um, I remember us going to the grocery store. And, um, you know, my mom, my mom was into, we were into a lot of different cultures, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, 
African culture. So we love to wear different, you know what I mean? The the headdresses and the, the outfits, daishikis and, you know, stuff like that. So she had an outfit, you know, from Nigeria. Um, she had an outfit on. Um, and I guess one of the people that worked there, he was from Nigeria. And um, they, I guess, you know, my mom became smitten with him. And probably within a week of her being divorced, she got married. To the new guy. Yeah, and, and and I remember me coming to her with tears in my eyes, and I said, Mommy, please, please don't marry him. I said, he's going to do the same thing that Marvin did to you. You know what I mean? That, you know, hey, 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 oh, hey. I'm so, so sorry, um, that, um, that, you know, that yeah, her husband had just to her. But, yeah. um, so... You know, of course, I'm a child, so, you know, I had to stay in the child's place, as I was told, and um, she was grown. Right. So, 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 she now you grown. Have a, so, you, so now you have another week old dad. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. And okay. so, he was cool until he wasn't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And his family was was off the chain. I mean, they were, they were cool. I mean, I love the culture. We learned a lot. You know what I mean? Um, but he was he was a a con artist, and um, you know, kind of made her into a different person. You know what I mean? It was already bad enough from the first marriage, and then you go into another crazy situation where another person is. You know what I mean? So, but the kind um, of dominated situation becomes right, right, right. So, um. They, I think they were together for about maybe three years or so. Mm -hmm. um, and she went through a lot with him. And, um, you know, it came to a point where I, you know, when I would come, you know, around his family and stuff, you know, his, his brothers were a little bit more um, too nice to me. And I would mention that sometimes, you know what I mean? And it was it was kind of like brushed under the rug, you know what I mean? And I'm like, okay, well, maybe this is not, you know, what I think it is. Because back in the day when they had the roller lip gloss, I used to have my eyes popping. My little lips would just be glistening like I had a crisp call on it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, oh, wow. um, it was... Uh, and how old were you then? Very, uh, huh? How old were you around that time? Mm, this is right before, probably 11 Okay. Eleven by the turn twelve. Mm -hmm. So like I, I was able yeah. Yeah, about eleven to twelve and I would go and spend the night over my, you know, my cousins, of course my new cousin's house and we would all have to sleep in the bed with him and you know what I mean, um when Ooh, his brother my, the um my mom's my mom's husband's brother. Oh no. Yeah, so you know. It would just be uncomfortable little situations here and there. But, you know, after a while, then my dad, of course, rescued me from that situation. I hated him for it because now he made me a, a, a only child. And so yeah. Oh, yeah. I went from That's having... Say, so your older brother and younger brother were left to stay with the mother. With your, my mom. With your mom in that situation. Yeah. yeah. How, did, how were they just... Uh, they dealt... You know, I I don't well, they don't really talk too much about it. I mean, they just know that, you know, that kind of destroyed my mom in a lot of ways, you know what I mean? And they had to go through every situation, every relationship that my mother went through, they definitely went through. Right. Um and so they last so they lasted three years. You go to Virginia with your dad and then you end up coming back and you say I remember you mentioned something about you was with your brother. And your mom went to New York and she you were left taking care of him and yeah. With maybe a, a month and a half worth of food. And and I had no job and I was going to school all the way in Gwinnett. So I had to take the train, the bus, you know what I mean? And then of course she was sent, you know, she'll pay bills every now and then. But the whole main thing, if I if the rent is a thousand dollars and I have no job, you know what I mean? And then now the food's gone because my little brother wants to eat everything and you know what I mean now I'm making phone calls to her friends hey can I clean your house can I do your hair you know what I mean thirty dollars forty dollars anything you know what I mean and 
that was pretty much a lot to have to deal with when all I'm trying to do is go to school and, and do hair like he wanted me to do. You know what I mean? My dad did hair as well, so it was like a family legacy, you know what I mean, for me to carry that on. But um, it was a lot of different obstacles in that, in the midst of that. Now, um, you know, afterwards, I my brothers, my brother, my oldest brother didn't know, my uncle didn't know that we were over there struggling the whole time and, and you know, no mom. She ended up calling, like, she would call every now and then. She'd be like, hey, I'm doing good. And, you know, I'm in bed. How long was she going at this point? Like, months. Like, I'd say about six, seven, maybe eight months. We were gone. Mm-hmm. We were gone for a long time. And then when she did come, she came and got him. And I ended up having to stay with my uncle. After he moved us in, you know, I mean, at first it was, you know, I would bring food by. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, what's going on? Like, we're not going to keep bringing food to you. What's up? And I'm like, well, I don't know. My mom never came back. By that time, the phone was off. My lights was being cut off. And, you know, me and my brother, you know, I'm still older. We still, we still fight. We still combative because he wants to be. He's in alternative school. He gets kicked out of alternative school for doing crazy stuff. So now I'm like, okay, I can't even. That was really his own reaction of the instability, right? And so now I'm like, I can't even control him. What am I supposed to do? I gotta go to school. I can't focus on school now. I'm hungry. I go to school every day. Now I can't eat. People trying to feed me. You know what I mean? And this has happened more than one time. That I've I've tried to complete school and you know and and messed up things have happened but you know, um, yeah I mean, she she didn't come back for a while and then when she did come back, I was already thank God I had um she had um, introduced me to one of her friends that was a celebrity hairstylist, and I was doing good for a while and then that's when um you know, stuff started started getting good and you know meeting celebrity clients you know what I mean and stuff like that it was cool and then my uncle decided he wanted to put me out because he thought I was having sex for money in his house so that's how I ended up homeless for six months on the street how old were you 18 I was I had yeah I had turned 18 and where was your mom at that point she had came and picked up her son and moved to Savannah I guess to live in her car Oh, the car time period, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, she had her, you know, her her kitchen in the back seat and, you know. Well, so, so, you know, this is the part I got to go to this because, of course, here we are. Um, Germany, we got a lot in common. And I, I think the part that over the last year I had to come to realize, um, like once, you know how you're in something, you can't really see the whole picture. Mm-hmm. unfortunately these narcissistic type of things is that people will paint the picture they'll get you to believe certain things they'll they'll precondition you to think this tell you these different stories these narratives so you already could i i, I use the word conditioning that's the yeah. best way i explain it so i personally have the same level of understanding of having a toxic relationship as far as having uh, difficulties with your with a you know mom and daughter, right? right? And then the family dynamic because the the bad part about it is the main person who you think is going to protect you when they start creating and spinning narratives about you, and then you, as a child, like you say, child supposed to be in a child place. You're not supposed to speak up. You're not supposed to say stuff. You know, in our house, you weren't supposed to speak. Uh, you know, it was that thing. Don't what happens in my house stay in my house type of. Right. Generation. Right. we're in that generation we're we're you know about the, about 10 years a little bit more of a 10 to 12 years apart so we're not that far away from each other in age but it's enough to understand that you came from that same rearing that you don't say what's going on even as dysfunctional and as crazy as it is right and young and you come up in those situations you don't understand that this is actually dysfunction it's your normality so right. until somebody or something 
or the situation gets so out of control, you don't necessarily understand what's going on, right? right. But one of the things that I can say is that, um, of course, our interaction, you know, as a woman, at some point, and this is the funny part, I know you said you grew up in church. And mm -hmm. so my, my ex, your mother, even with me meeting her, she was this church person. So mm -hmm. we talking to men. So where did the woman situation, like, where did yeah. that Where did that stir the pot? <laughs> yes. She's over there being a heathen now. No, I'm not just <laughs> Now she she went to Savannah and um she came back with a roommate supposedly mm -hmm. and um um I was still I was still with my uncle at his house um still I still stayed there my oldest brother was about to go to the army and um she came with the news like um guys i want you to meet my roommate and you know she's been real helpful whatever and then maybe i think maybe a month maybe a month later she was saying oh um i need all my kids to be in savannah georgia for my wedding okay so how does that even, how how did y'all even deal with that? Knowing that, you know, my mom, same thing, holy roller, you know, growing up in church and, you know. I thought she was a hypocrite. I thought she was a liar. <laughs> um, I didn't want no parts of it because that's not what you taught me. You know what I mean? And for so long, my mom, you know, because I played basketball, my mom was like, you know, calling me a bull dagger the whole time. Like I'm thinking I was going to be, a butch girl who are gay because I wore baggy <laughs> clothes and played basketball. So and I'm yeah. like, how the tables have turned. You love sushi now. Like it's, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Not sushi. <laughs> so, <laughs> Not sushi. So, so yeah, I mean we well, I mean, I'm not even gonna lie because of a woman that has grown up to be a prophetess and you know what I mean an evangelist and in the church and you know what I mean all these things and my great grandmother was a bishop and you know what I mean my grandmother was in the church. We, this is what we know. This is all we know is mm -hmm. is God and the church. Mm -hmm. And these are things that you taught me that. Oh, being yeah, used to condemn, wrong. condemn you about that you were being condemned and about. judge all of the people that were, right. you know what I mean? And right. so it 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 really we took it a lot harder because you know what I mean. You mm -hmm. lied number one and told us this was your friend and roommate. Mm -hmm. All the while, this was a whole relationship <laughs> that you were hiding when you could have just been probably we probably would have took it better if she was honest. And saying, you know, came to us in a different way instead of just bringing it up on everyone in the whole family. So it was a big shock. And, um, and she so got this. So this level of um, surprise, I'm sure, was probably a lot. So so there there wasn't an engagement, per se. I don't know. This is no. now marriage number three. I don't know how many engagements there were prior to this marriage. But... Um, uh, <laughs> it was probably a lot more, but um, she, I mean, she, she said her share. Of, I can say this, man and woman, my mother's never been with anybody that's never had any money. They've always had a car. They've always had their own house. They've had good credit, great credit, businesses, money, and... <laughs> And when we done, we over here broke, disgusted, bamboozled, in therapy, crippled, financially, Word. mentally, and emotionally. Ask me. I know. <laughs> and I've never been anywhere outside of the country <laughs> with no money. Listen, I've never. Listen. And my mom's been over the world with donations and people just want to bless her. And you know what I mean? And And this person is wanted to send her somewhere. And, and, and it's cool. And I, and I, I can't even lie. A lot of things that my mom has done, I've I've repeated, but I've gotten paid. You know what I mean? So, and I'm not going anywhere where 
I wasn't getting any compensation. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to go somewhere where I was struggling. So that, I mean, a lot of ways, you know I mean? My mom did, you know, did her thing. But this was a whole totally new avenue of, you so know, her dealing about, with the whole woman. It right. was a so lot this, different. So, so this the first the first moment of hearing this situation. So did y'all go to the wedding? Yeah. How, Unfortunately. How? We did. It was it was a it was a house wedding. Okay. You know what I mean? Well, not that many people that showed up, but me and my oldest brother were very upset. We didn't we didn't like it at all. My little brother had to accept it because he was the youngest. Right. So you know what I mean? Like uh <laughs> I mean, we had nothing against the lady. The lady was cool. It's just the deception in it, you know what I mean? Um you know, for so many years of of a woman judging or saying these things are not right or you know what I mean mm -hmm. your word is your bond and that's how we felt like my mom yeah she could do wrong but that's what my mom said that's what we're going with. you know what I mean so um for it to be that it was just like I we for me I didn't talk to my mom after that for probably about a year and a half mm -hmm. year two years after and then that's when everything kind of trickled down when, you know what I mean, I ended up in Florida. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I what my story to everyone, which I did lie, and I told them I was going to another celebrity hairstylist to work for somebody in Florida, which mm -hmm. all the while was I was going to survive. Because I felt like nobody at that point really cared. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, I didn't have no mama that really gave a damn at that point and then my uncle was you know he was young making his little millions doing his mortgage and you know living his life so you know what I mean he wanted his own house to himself and now I understand that but it was just the way that and people kind of did things toward me that was kind of unfair you know what I mean because I really wasn't doing anything to anybody but trying to do make a life for myself you know what I mean Exactly. So. so you get to Florida and for you, um, you know, what's what's the dynamics with, you know, that like I guess you say your mom got married at that point, she's in Savannah, your brother's there. Um, how long so you ended up being in Miami and you were pretty much homeless? Well, in Miami I had a place to live. Okay. Okay. As okay. soon as I got off the bus. The difference oh. was I was in Georgia, I was sleeping outside. Got you. So, um, at train stations, at you know, on, on park benches, and you know, um wherever I could, um, staying with my uncle's friend for a little bit, then they got kicked out. Then I stayed with um, you know, um one of my classmates um for a little bit and that didn't work, you know what I mean? They had family going on so it was just a lot of bouncing around still the same thing that I was doing when I was little it right. was continuing to happen in my in my um almost adult life right. and so Miami was was a place to live a place to work and a place to have some food okay I get it I live in Florida too so, I so you know what I'm saying like at that point I didn't care pimp or not mm -hmm. I had I had security I had a place you know what I mean and I was ready to do and 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 be whatever anybody needed me to be at that point right. so yeah so once you kind of end up being there and I know that you know at the age factor you're talking about you became a mom shortly some years ago within that realm or yeah um after speeding up, speeding up, um, some years later, um, my I, I initially was told I would never get pregnant. Let's just put that there. Um, I was always told I would never have kids. I was not bearing doctor or something. Yeah, I'm a doctor. I was always told I would never have children, and so the fact that I even got pregnant more than once. <laughs> was a miracle to me in itself um 
I ended up uh, having my first pregnancy at 21 mm -hmm. and ended up, um, the person that I was with um, ended up making me get an abortion at six months. And then maybe a year, you know, two years later, I ended up getting pregnant again by the same person and um, ended up not knowing. Um, both times I didn't know I was pregnant. Hmm. So um when I left this this last time, um I had happened to be three and a half months pregnant and didn't know the whole time. Hmm. So I was just out there just doing whatever, you know, surviving and working and hustling and doing what I had to do and escaping from another person that was, you know, um taking advantage. You know what I mean? Somebody I did love and cherish and you know, tried to build something with who also was pimping me. <laughs> um, it was just too much. Um, I was I was the bottom, and I was running pretty much the whole camp. And you know, when things started to get rough, um, I had to go, and I left millions of dollars in a uh, name. I left cars. I left big house. I left everything because it was either my life or it was me staying in a miserable place. And maybe it was, I didn't even know I was pregnant. So that would have been another baby that would have been gone. You know what I mean? So yeah, 23, I ended up having my oldest son, four pounds, 11 ounces. And, uh, he was, um, my miracle baby fought hard, just like his mom fought hard. And, um, uh, now he's 15, standing strong, about to be in ninth grade. Woo -woo. So, um, you know, I'm excited. Um, and then I, you know, he's a miracle in itself. And yeah, he is. You know, and that is rough. Yeah, extremely. And it was amazing that you know I remember when I I met you after I said I do. <laughs> And at the time when I met you, you didn't have him. You didn't know where he was. And I remember um, we had gotten married. And then within days, your brother got married. And we was at your brother's wedding. And we all met. And you told me what was going on. And your mom had told me about him not being with you and not knowing where he was. What? But after our discussion, I remember telling you, I said, you know, we, we drove back together. Right. I remember telling you that you're going to find him. And if I, if I don't do nothing else, I'm going to help you find him. Right. And, uh, you know, like I mentioned in the beginning, to, to find that he was somewhere right in your, in your, in your grips, um, crazy. Yeah. So you, so once you left him and you, you had the baby, did, were you back in Georgia? Um, I actually moved with my mother in Chicago when I got pregnant. And so I went, to I mean, the she, you left in Savannah, now she's in Chicago. So. Oh, she, she ended up, she ended up, um, oh, well, shoot, I fast forwarded too much, huh? She uh, had got a divorce. Oh. But she had got a divorce from that lady uh, and ended up, um, by the time I was 23, she was with another young woman um, who lived in Chicago, um, ex-police officer. And um, I reconnected with my mom it seemed like every time I got pregnant, my mom knew. And so um, I would go and, you know, she would offer her help. And, you know, wherever I was, my mom was like, no, okay, you're going to come with me. You know what I'm saying? We're going to do this, the baby and all this. It's cool. And then it was probably the worst, the one of the worst situations that I had to go through. Um, when you went to her? When I went and allowed her to help me again, yeah, it was it was it was a lot. It was difficult. I mean, it was good to get in school, but to go to school and not be able to eat, you know what I mean, and you're pregnant, mm -hmm. or you know, um, just the relationship was just it was it was existing, but it was fake. And With, and I hadn't been around my mother in so long, you know. Mm -hmm. It was it was like, you know what I mean, like 
a show still kind of the same round of how I was when I was a kid when we're getting beat up at home and then we go to church and everything's fine. Baby, so, ooh, girl, stop. Let me tell you something, Jeremy. You done hit a nerve, honey, because it's so funny. <laughs> I'm having this conversation and um, literally <laughs> that exact type of sentiment, my same experience, you know, for me, um, my mother and I have had toxicity, you know, and my mother, she had, she had a stroke over 10 years ago and now she's dealing with, uh, you know, a, a form of dementia. Right. And I, I had to come to a point of recognizing that this toxicity, the, the, the narcissistic treatment, the crazy aspects of going to church and we in the choir and I'm playing the instrument. She planted, she in the church and big hat and all this and big personality and, you know, fashion, the fashion, the fashion fair, you know, right. so that whole personality sounds familiar, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, um, but also, you know, going from, you know, we leaving the house and you busting me upside my head and calling me out of my name. And then we walking into the church and we, we sing and praising the Lord. And it's like, this don't, this seems contradictory and crazy. And yeah, yeah and, and, and you don't realize that the relationships that you're drawing, the experiences that you're drawing is coming from these foundations mm -hmm. of where your, your, your beginnings in, in the areas of where your development, your developmental, a friend of mine says your developmental ages are extreme. That, that time period between like seven to 12 years old. And that imprint is a lot of what possibly can be what the rest of your life can look like, you know, because of the influential aspects of your yeah. life. And so when you say that, it's like, yeah, it's it's like that experience. Um, and it's ironic, is 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 precisely the element of how I recognize with your mom that I saw these aspects of my mom in in her and how she carried herself and the way she did certain things and how she handled, you know, which drew me to her. You right. right. And you know, when you say, you know, uh you reconvening and you guys having that time period and it was unhealthy. And when you're pregnant, that's one of the most important times. Um, that you know, what you're dealing with is transcending to your baby, right? And it 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 affects you. Yeah. Affecting that baby too, you know. So um, so now you're in Chicago, you, you've had the baby and you're now trying to, you know, it sounds like you're trying to rebuild yourself again. Yeah. Well, I mean, I ended up having to leave. I didn't actually get a chance to have the baby in Chicago. Um, mm -hmm. I was actually, this is my home now. <laughs> I was kicked out. <laughs> I was kicked out. Oh. My things were thrown down a steps and I was told to get out. And um, that was by my mother, uh, all because um, I didn't want to impose of my friend. Um, so, so yeah, um, I was I was already w had a bus ticket for my aunt in Charlotte, and um, she was gracious enough to be the family that I really need. Um, Mm -hmm. And this was and on, your, support. on your mom or dad's side? On my dad's side. Um, my dad's stepmother. I mean, step stepmom's, you know, daughter. So this mm -hmm. would be my dad's stepsister. You know what uh -huh. I mean? Um, who I still consider my family, you know, I mean, my grandmother and my aunt. Um, and they uh welcomed me since I was a since since birth, you know what I mean? So I've known them to be my family. Um so all you my life have more stability from the dad's side versus the mom's side of things yeah i mean i did um my dad's mother never liked me so mm -hmm. um she um only before she died maybe um i think about four vision four years so like four years um like up until four years ago she didn't want to um have a relationship with me only on facebook she said Oh no. <laughs> um she was okay with me having a Facebook relationship, um, but no. not a full um 
Girl, up close people, relationship people. only because she was upset with my grandfather for cheating on her with mm-hmm. the woman that I call my grandmother. So I've had a lot of rele- rejection on on both sides. Um, you know, um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, my dad's side was a lot more stable. Mm-hmm. Um, but. I wouldn't say uh, I had very much connections with a lot of people. So, like, I don't know a lot of my dad's family, but I know, you know what I mean? Like, um, my grandfather, I was I was able to to meet my grandfather and be around my grandfather from my, 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 my aunt, you know what I mean? Who's my dad's stepsister, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and my grandmother, um, those are the people that was able to allow me to be around different family members. Now, my mom's family, we all grew up like brothers and sisters, my cousins, you know what I mean? They right, changed right, my right. diapers. Right. And uh, my grandmother was like my best friend. That was my ace, boom, cone. Me and her was a lot alike, you know what I mean? She was the very mother's blunt mother's and mother's mother. and we were... Mm-hmm. And, you know, and she's she's very well missed. Um, I was uh, fortunate to be around my great grandmother before she passed, you know. So I, I've always grown up old, uh, old soul. Mm-hmm. And so um, I just didn't have uh, very big connections with a lot of people. I wasn't allowed to, you know, be around certain people. So uh, I wasn't able to experience regular family type of things. Mm-hmm like a normal kid should have you know what i mean right so. I do. so you didn't stay in chicago you ended up going from chicago to back to north carolina and then the baby at some point this uh situation with him gets pulled into another d- dynamic right and this is another guy that you end up <laughs> seeing right yeah um we had been together before I left Chicago, he ended up um, having a warrant and um, I convinced him like, let's just go ahead and get taken care of um, thinking in that he was the father of my child, mm-hmm. not knowing it was my previous um, partner's baby. Um, so um, I ended up getting into a, a, a relationship with him very quickly. And so, of course, he thought he was the father. I thought so, too. But, you know, while I was pregnant, I was just, you know, like, it's almost time for me to have the baby. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about DNA. Mm -hmm. Because I did just leave my last partner. You know what I mean? I want to make sure everything is, is, you know, up and up. And, no, he was like, no, I know this is my baby. And all this. I'm like, okay. So I finally get to North Carolina. You know, I had complications with my baby, of course. Um, my son ended up being um, hospitalized up until Obama's inauguration. He ended up getting out. And um, once he got out, um, I ended up um, going back to my aunt's house for a little while. And then, you know, my partner, that he ended up, you know, resolving his legal issues. And we came back together and eventually I ended up moving down to uh Miami with him and we ended up you know getting an apartment and and stuff like that and and things were good I mean things were great we had you know no problems everything was good and you know um after I think about maybe five months five I think my baby was like maybe five months Mm -hmm. it was starting to become an issue and we had our our one first altercation and he called the I tried to call the police because he put his hands threw my baby on the couch and it was just a whole big physical you know thing we were on the balcony and went from the balcony you know what I mean I'm being scared that my baby's gonna be tossed over the balcony you know what I mean it was just a lot Mm -hmm. and I ended up not being able to call the police he broke my phone and called the police on me they told him to leave, and once um, they they he left, I began to pack all me and my baby stuff, and um, he came back right after the, like an hour later, 
and sat in the house after the police told him to leave. And I was really trying to get away, but, you know, I couldn't at that time. The next day, I ended up having my best friend come pick me up. And um, he wouldn't let me take my baby with me. You know what I mean? So um, he ended up getting a restrainer order on me in a temporary custody of, of, my, child. of my child. And so you had the DNA at that time? Or you did? We didn't have no, I didn't have no DNA, but come to find out, probably the reason why he was snapping was because mm, his baby mother got a DNA test for him done behind my back. And it came out as a 33%. For your son? For my son. Wow. Wow. Mm, okay. Yep. So then and so, um the judge granted him um custody of my baby. And for a few months or whatever, he kept showing up to my job. At that time I was back dancing in the club. He would show up to my job with the police saying that I kidnapped my baby and um, you know, I would steal my phone and tell them that I stole something from him and you know, it was just it, that went on for about at least four or five months. You know what I mean? Um, I ended up finally um being able to kidnap my baby back and I, I mean my best friend. Um, ended up getting my baby and we ended up, I ended up leaving and going back to my aunt's house. Well, I get a phone call from a detective in Miami saying, if I did not bring my baby back to Florida, that I will be, they will be calling the people in Charlotte to come ar and arrest me and to transport me and my child back to Florida because I kidnapped my own child from his father. And he wasn't his father. And he wasn't his daddy. Wow. Yeah, so I went through a lot with him. Well, you know what's crazy? It's like you were taken from your mom in a struggle with your father and then it turned around and happened for you with yeah. your... Wow, okay. So yeah. then, so and, you know, um, in that time period, you know, what was your, what was the support from your other side of your family? Like, because I know you keep talking about your, your dad's side. Were you able to get any support from your family that on your maternal side to help with the situation at that time? No, no? nothing. So are you literally, um, you're in North Carolina and you go back to Florida and then at that point, how old was he when that happened? He wasn't even a year. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. So I had to bring him back. Um, when I brought him back, um, you know, we ended up having to do the restraining order again. It was a big thing. And then he just um, so ended up. I, 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 yeah. And then, it, of course, it expired after a while, whatever. It wasn't really. Like he kept temporary. showing up, right? Temporary. temporary. So, um, after a while, um, it was it it made it to a point where he would be over all the time. So you know, at a particular time, I had to work, and he took care of the baby and didn't bring my child back, and that's how I never saw him after four years. I think he was seven months when he took him. And then you didn't see him. I didn't see him for four, four more years. Right. I didn't see my son again until he was five. Wow. And then if I did, if he did allow me to see him, it was to bring money or buy gifts or... Um, he wouldn't let you release him in your... Oh, no, no, no. And then um, I think one birthday party... We went to Chuck E. Cheese and one of my ex-best friends um, called the police and he convinced the police with his 33% DNA that he was the father and I cannot take my child with me. Wow. So anytime that I went to like, I went to the police department, the police tried to lock me up for 
telling them someone kidnapped my child who was not his father. And, you know, I had five, five detectives around me, surrounding me, accusing me of throwing my baby in the trash. And, and why would you give him to a stranger? And, you know what I mean? It was just, it was oh, a lot. Man. That's dramatic, man. It's a lot. You're listening to the Loudmouth Radio Network.